Okay, mince and tatties. An iconic dish uh, of Scotland. And very rightly so too, because it's great. Scotland produces some of the best beef in Europe and uh, Aberdeen Angus cattle are famous for producing excellent meat. And that's what I've got here. I've got some lean Aberdeen Angus steak. And the weight on that pack is 500 grams. Uh, the tatties are potatoes, which uh, I'm using here because the potatoes are mashed. I like to use a floury potato and the good floury potatoes I can buy are baking potatoes. So I've got here about twice the volume of of the meat. Uh, four medium sized baking potatoes. I've got some beef dripping to cook the uh, meat in and I've got some carrots. Again, I've got about half of the volume of meat as carrots and again another half of the volume of meat as onion so that's uh, half a large onion from for the potatoes mashing the potatoes I've got um, a couple of generous knobs of butter and some milk and then the whole thing is completed with salt and pepper right let's get started Okay, the first thing I want to do is get a fairly large pan hot and then I'm going to go in with just a little bit, maybe a couple of teaspoons of uh, beef dripping. If you haven't got beef dripping, you can use lard or, or just your favourite cooking oil. You don't want much though. Because we're trying to keep the fat content of this down, we've got extra lean Aberdeen Angus mince. And I'm going to drop that straight in to the hot fat and then I'm going to start breaking that up. I want to get that nicely broken up and then get it browning. And once it starts to brown, I mean really starts to brown, then I start to add the other ingredients. I'll bring you back to that. One of the problems we have with mince is that it starts to ship a lot of liquid as it cooks. So we want to get past that stage. We want to fry off all that liquid so that that liquid is no longer in the pan and it's, and it's properly frying because at the moment that meat is just poaching in its own liquid. So we want to get that to a stage where it's actually frying again. So we keep it on high heat, keep it moving and break it up. And then once it starts to fry and sizzle again, I'll bring you back. So now we're at that stage where most of the liquid is boiled off and it's starting to fry again. This is a great time to introduce the onions. I've finally chopped the onion up and I'll drop that in. And now I want to stir and fry until the onion becomes translucent. So that takes a couple of minutes, I'll bring you back when that's ready. Okay, the onion's starting to become translucent and it's starting to stick on the bottom. And by now you should be getting the most amazing beefy smells. So at this stage, I'm just gonna add in 400 ml of beef stock. And you can make that up with a stock cube or however you get your beef bouillon. And then that can be turned down to a simmer and in order to get our beef and beef mince is generally cut from the chuck quite often is cut from the chuck so it does need a bit of cooking so what we're going to do is just let that simmer down for about an hour with the lid on hey guys i hope you're enjoying the video so far uh, if you want to help me out with the donation there's a uh, links uh, donation links below to uh, paypal subscribe star and buy me a coffee 
meanwhile, the thumbs up and your comments below help a lot. Thanks ever so much. Thanks in advance. OK, so that's been cooking at a simmer now for about 50 minutes, an hour, something like that. And I'm now going to throw in my carrots. I like the carrot flavour in there, but I don't like it overcooked. So that's going to go in there, get stirred in, and then I'll let that carry on simmering for another 20 minutes. So my taters I chop up fairly small because that means they'll just be easier to mash and they'll cook a little bit faster. And the reason we use these baking potatoes because they're soft and fluffy and they break up really nice. You know, you don't get you don't get little um, eyes of hard pellets in them when they cook. So I'm going to add a little pinch of salt to that and I'm going to fill it up with water to just above the potatoes. And when it's a little tip, when you are cooking potatoes, cook them from cold rather than adding them to hot water or adding hot water to the potatoes. So always cook them from cold. And we cook those a good 20 minutes until they're all nice and broken up. On the side, I'm doing some uh, carrot and rutabaga or swede as we call it. I think the Scottish call it turnip or neeps. And um, again, just a little pinch of uh, salt in there and top it up with water. And I'll be mashing those up as well uh, on the side, uh, separate from the potatoes. Again, we have uh, Mr. Paul, Bradley Bennett and Mike and Nancy Abel to thank for the production of this video. Thanks, guys. You're helping keep the lights on around here. Cheers. Okay, so looking at my simmering mince. Uh, it's a little low on water, so I'm just going to top that up a bit. And you can top this up with hot or cold water. Let's have a look. Wants to be about there. So there we are. It's... Um, simmered down nicely the carrot isn't overcooked and we're now ready to turn this into proper mince by thickening it up so i've taken two dessert spoons full of corn flour or cornstarch and mixed it up with some water and i'm going to add that to my mince And that will thicken the mince. It's at this stage we need to go in and do a taste test to make sure we do, we're doing it right. So take a bit of mince. Have a taste test. And then you can adjust with salt and pepper. So I'm going to add some pepper. I like quite a lot of pepper. You put in as much as you like. And... A little trick here I use, instead of using salt, is I use gravy granules. So I'm going to put in one teaspoon, two teaspoons of gravy granules, and then I'll stir those in. They'll thicken up a little more, and they'll also add some colour and some seasoning to it. At this stage, stir it in, make sure it's um, all well combined. At this stage, do your second taste test. Fantastic. That is bang on the money. I don't need to do anything more to that. I think I'll get on a mash of potatoes. So I've got my uh, potatoes steamed, mashed ready to go so I'm going in there with my masher and you've got to do this very thoroughly because you don't want lumps lumps isn't good and when you've got it all mashed up nicely like that 
You mash it again. And then you can try a bit. Check for lumps. And if you've done all this right, you'll have no lumps in it. So at this stage, I can introduce one of my knobs of butter. The other one's for the uh, Sweden carrot. And a splash of milk. You can also add a bit of cream if you like, a bit of single cream. But just a little bit of each. And then we start to mash that up really, really well. And once I've got it to that stage, I like to go in with my whisk and give it a whisk up. The whisking lightens it up a little bit and uh, makes it a little bit special. Okay, now for the Swede, we give it a mash. And we don't want to go too heavy on the mashing with this one because I like a little bit of texture in it and I like to be able to tell which bits are carrot and which bits are swede. So I'm going to go in there with some butter and finish this off with a fork. Another little addition you can give to this and even your potatoes if, you, if you're that way inclined is to just give it a little bit of pepper, that's what, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, maybe a little less. And then I just whisk that in nicely. Just gives it another element. And now, we're ready to serve our mince and tatties. Okay, so first on your plate is a nice dollop of tatties. I like to be quite generous with the tatties. Next on there goes some carrot and swede, or carrot and neeps. That looks nice. And then onto that goes a gorgeous dollop of mince. Now tell me that doesn't look gorgeous to you. Taste test. Let's get a bit of the uh, mince, a bit of the carrot, a bit of the tatties. Mmm. Mmm. Have a taste of the um, carrot and neeps with the mmm mmm there's still a little tiny bite left in the carrots that's why I leave them till a little bit later just a little but it's there it's subtle and um, I really do enjoy this meal it's superb thank you Scotland mmm rather pleased with that